What's going on boys and guys here, welcome back to another tutorial. Now today's video I'm going to show you how to left stick dribble. Um, for those of you that do know me, one of my arguably best skills is left stick dribbling. But yet this year it's completely in the mud. So I'm going to explain to you how you can keep the ball safe, take a touch away. A couple of new tricks that I've learned as well. Um, and if, don't forget if you want to get better people, come to my FIFA school series, links down below in the description. But I'll go through that at the end of the video. So left stick dribbling. Now the first thing is, um, for those of you that don't know, I used to flick my left analog stick rapidly. And, and that was the best way to dribble, par using, I suppose you can say, um, analog dribbling. Now, this year, it's the same thing, but you can't flick as you would last year. You'll get micro stutter movements or shimmies. But what you want to do is you want to basically rotate it in a smooth motion. Now, my best advice is think of yourself like you're holding a paintbrush. Okay, like again, a paintbrush from an easel, and you're just kind of painting in one long stroke. That is the way you want to dribble. Okay, so the first thing is when you get the ball is you take a touch completely away. Now look how long I hold my left analog stick for. So you see when I, I'm going to show you an example now. Don't forget this is live. So what you're seeing right now, and you can see on my controllers, everything's happening live on the screen. So the idea is you take the touch completely away. So look here, completely away. Here, completely away. You see that? Don't just go flick and then decide. That, don't go like this and decide to pass after. Hold it for longer than you think. Like this. See that? Go for like the complete movement. And what this does is, because the way the game works out, the ball passage, you're basically saying to the game, I want you to force the animation. I don't want you to start the animation and then midway through, then change it. And that is the way you can... And once you get used to it, you can send left strip like this and you can understand the movement. Even with someone like Ronaldo, you can understand the intricacies of how someone can move with the ball. Let's just defend this situation over here. Go with a hard slide tackle going to run back here now. I don't even know what formation I've even got set up over here. Um, but yeah, so even when I'm going and I'm attacking, if I want to be fast, I do the same thing. But I take more of a risk when it's a kid. i got space around me. So I can take more of the risk here. Now, I still do the shimmy. So for example, I still go one way and the other way. You see that? That's a shimmy. For those of you that know, I don't use skill moves. I just use less dribbling. You can still do the shimmy. Now, players like Neymar, in theory, they should feel better, but they don't. So what I do is I use the L1 button like this. I supplement my left stick dribbling, not the R1 button. This is important, okay? The R1 button is used to keep the ball. It's basically R1 and, in my opinion, R1 dribbling. So is this one over here. R1 dribbling and left stick dribbling are all going to be the same movement. The reason why left stick was important is because your body covers the ball. So what I do now is I just touch the, the L1 button like that. Just touch that. And this is something I used to do back in FIFA 19. If you watch some of my old 15k FIFA 19 videos, you remember this is a close dribbling mechanic. So when you tap the L1 button, you're basically pressing strafe dribbling. In FIFA 19, it was close dribbling. But it was something that I use. And if you're in trouble, you can always hold the L1 button to move the ball away. It's because the way you take the ball in your passage and you stride it backwards. So if you want to evade, you can always use the L1 button and go backwards because your foot is on the ball. You can even use it inside the box if someone is next to you because you can go into these spaces that other, other skills can't do and you can combine that with, for example, the run button, uh, L1 button and then the run button like that to get a bit of a speed boost. So that is one of the key ways you can use it. So you hold the L1 button and stretch your blank. Uh, if you're part of my Patreon series, you're going to see a video on this in detail coming up. Um, later on today, but you could see how Ronaldo and Ronaldo's got an architect style on him So technically he should be lengthy so you can see even though Ronaldo has a lengthy style He still had that short burst explosive runs in the area the second one you can do is close dribbling which is like this now um, Sorry, it's like this I believe now. I don't really like it. Um, I've tried it now This is a, my biggest gripe and I'm gonna pause the game here so I can explain this to you This is very very important. I'm gonna kick the ball out of play here just so I can Get some time explaining this to you. This is very, very important. First of all, let me just sub off. Um, I still play Walker and centre-back, by the way. Fantastic player. Watch when the meta changes. Once we, this guy with lengthy, unbelievable. Anyway, besides that, so this is very important. When you're left stick dribbling, you have to think of it like um, the way you move the ball is you protect the ball. Now, you can use shielding, the L2 button, but shielding doesn't protect the ball as, you, as much as you think because it pushes your body up against someone else and you lean back, okay? Agile dribbling keeps the ball close in between your feet. The idea behind left stick dribbling is it 
you take the ball, you capture it, you kind of not trap it, but you kind of get the ball and you slide it along on a half turn and your body is covering. So if your opponent tries to tackle you, he can't because he's behind you. So because you can't do that anymore, what we're doing is we're using the strafe dribbling movement alongside it to create that space. Now, if you are going to use a shield button, I'll show you an example where you can use a shield button. If you are going to use a shield button, use it as the first touch quickly, like, like that. Because if you hold it too long, like you saw just there, you can lose the Bumgo for a beautiful tackle with Kyle Walker. Absolutely magnificent, world class right there. But like that. So you can just literally just tap it. A short tap. And that's only if someone is realistically behind you like that. You can do a short tap and you can change direction. So we're not using it to shield the ball almost. We're using it to kind of take a touch and go into that direction. You're basically forcing the ball on that stutter. You see that? So what I do is, so again, close dribbling, I would not use it. Um, and you can see shielding there. Doesn't really help when you try to use independently because the way your body moves and then if someone's in front of you, you could be in trouble. We're just going to run back here with Goretzka and Jeremiah, by the way, an absolute tanky card. Now, you can also use skill moves to give you a speed boost. So you could, for example, use the explosive fake shot like that. Look at that. See that speed boost? Um, another video on, a video on my Patreon series if you want more information in regards to that. But I think... Um, realistically, you got the open up fake shots. So all these are all pace boot attributes that you can use. So for now, the solution I have is if I'm in an attacking final third, let's say for example like here and I'm like, you know what, I really need a speed boost. Then I would use for example a skill move. So I'm probably going to release a video on skill moves, the speed boost. Um, it should be coming out later on today. Now the second thing is the player type. Does the player type influence um, how left stick dribbling is? Yes and no. Um, are you going to see a significant difference? This is the key, a significant difference with Neymar? Maybe not. Um, I think if we if we move someone like Ronaldo on the ball, I mean, he's he's very clunky, as you can see. But you can argue the strength kind of helps him a little bit. If we give the ball to Neymar, which when I get the ball back, give the ball to Neymar, you can see it like this. He's a bit more smoother. So for the more acute turns, it's fine. Now, you see, for example, like here, I normally move my left analog stick. Now, you, there's two ways you can also do this, right? You can move your left analog stick incrementally, like almost like you're caressing it. See, like I'm barely moving the left analog stick. You can do that. This is also, so you don't have to flick it where you hear the audible click. See the audible click? You have to flick it. This is the way I used to dribble back in the day. I used to use analog sprint. And then what happened was I changed my run button. So long story short, I'll give it a bit of a, the story. So I play ISS control. So when you're seeing the controls on the screen, apart from the left analog stick, for example, I teammate contain um, with another with, with square. Now, or circle, whatever it is. Now, what it is, I used to use the, the analog sprint. Now, this is something that I would recommend for advanced users. Now, to be honest, even I don't use this. Um, but if you go to controller settings, um, you scroll down, you can turn off analog sprint. Now, for me, it's R1. With R1, it doesn't work because it's kind of like, it's a binary um, not binary, I completely forgot the word, I was going to say boolean, I completely forgot the word I was going to say, but it's just either on or off, it's either zero or one, you know what I mean, like, like, a, like a light switch, um, whereas when you have analog sprint on with the R2 button, um, it's kind of like a gas pedal in your car, so the more you hold it in, the faster you will move, so you could effectively control the speed of left stick dribbling, uh, it's very hard to do, and I wouldn't recommend it because there's some knock-on effects. Like if you're using the run and jockey, you can control the speed of the run and jockey like that as well. Um, but the only downside with that is, is that um, sometimes if you just touch the right hand, um, the L2 button, or you just literally just tap it like just how you can see my L2 button, where you can gradually tap it, you don't get a full registered run. So I wouldn't recommend that. The second thing I want to give you is like this. See this? The, the quick flick. It creates a stutter movement. Like this. See that? You're creating a start movement. So what you can do is you do the quick flick and then move your left analog stick. So we're going to show you now a real real life example now of me actually playing now because to show you how I would do it. So let's say I was in a game. I will control the ball here. Take a touch away. That was a bad pass. Mistake on my end. Take a touch completely away. Look at my left analog stick. How long I'm holding it for. And then if I'm in trouble... You can see like that. You see how the player, you can't turn as well. You can also use a ball roll turn. Now, the ball roll turn has been nerfed, but the ball keeps the ball close to your feet. So you can dribble and then dribble out like that. You see that? Like this. Do you see that? So we're using the, the, the ball roll to give us the angle. And then we're kind of exiting sharply 
with uh, with a left analytic. Now the ball roll turn has been nerfed significantly. Going to run back here with this. Going to go for the hard side tackle if I can read this perfectly. Going to wait, 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 wait. And you can see again, pace still trumps everything. Again, we want to take a touch here. Take a touch for left analog stick. Good read for my opponent there. Again, take a touch upwards. Quick pass. L1 trigger. And also, try not to pass the ball in a difficult place. I know it sounds like common sense, but a lot of players, they try to pass the ball like to Ronaldo when he's not clear. If you can't make that pass, just pass the ball away. Get the ball back and wait for Ronaldo to go in space. Don't try to force the ball. Um... So I want to mention, you can also do a uh, first time skill moves as well, by the way, that gives you also a bit of a, sp a speed boost as well. Going to use the run and jockey here, just going to run back here. I still use the run and jockey this way. I, th I still think it's the most superior method of Leicester dribbling. Um, although it's quite hard, it's just the fact that you can variably, can there's no other run and jockey style that can variably control um, your your, um, your run and jockey. Because you see, if you do that, um, I like to call them, um, like for there, good save. If you try to do the run and jockey with the L2 and R2, um, but you let go of the um, of the run button, you could only have two sprint, sprint speeds. You can have zero or 100, but when you hold it with L2 and R2, um, but you control the sprint speed yourself manually with the amount of pressure you put on the R2 button, it changes the way, and your left analog stick more importantly, it changes the way you can dribble. So you see like here, I go like that, and I'm going to run into the space. I'm not too sure, so I'm going to take a touch away. You can see that's the thing that even I'm trying to get used to. You see those touches there when there's someone directly behind you? You can't keep the ball safe. And that is why when you try to use the R, 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 R2 button, that like you can see you lose the ball because you open your body up when, you want to, when you're trying to make that touch. And that is why that L2 button, I mean L1 should I say, is the best thing I'm using right now. So I'll actually just spam it. So for now, if you have no idea what's going on, just spam it. But as you can see, be careful because when you spam it, you're going to send players going forward at the same time. Um, so what I would say, just incrementally turn it. And you know what? If you struggle with tr triggering players forward, it might be a good way to get your get yourself. You see that habit? See that I turn there in that situation? But again, you see you can trigger a player going forward. So you've got to be careful with that. You can select that, get that movement in. And again, you can hold it as well this touch tap 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 not too sure i'm gonna try i'm gonna try to bun and weave into this space now it's gonna be quite difficult but i'm gonna try to make it from here in this fifa this is actually the most challenging thing where i could do this so easy but we're gonna okay i, I was trying to go from all the way from there to the inside the box just less of dribbling that's what i used to do normally that's why i don't use skill moves um but this year might be a different one i'm gonna bring the goalkeeper out again just to close the angle out here and i want to go cut the cut back here running jockey to defend the angle towards goal again the basic principles defending hasn't changed much as you think it's just that people are just of course used to being very aggressive especially with the last year this is a new um goal kick goal th goal kick goalkeeper thrower i was meant to say I'm gonna go here did l1 trigger and then we're gonna go with shimmy let's see if we can get it here like this nice a bit too slow and uh, we tried to draw a pass goalkeeper, but that didn't work out. Um, but that is a, the general gist. So the tap in the L1 button, you can tap the L2 button as well. Um, you can still use the agile dribbling, but again, I would say the sprint speed boost is kind of the main thing that you really, really want over here. Nice play. Nice through ball. Again, you can use the ball roll as well. Then once you know how to use the left analog stick completely, you can then go into these unique paths. As I said, look, guys, it's the first iteration of technical dribbling. Don't forget, old gen, you haven't got this issue. Lesser dribbling on old gen feels amazing. Um, but this generation on new gen, there is definitely a big, big issue. In my opinion, it has to be buffed. Um, there has to be some change less dribbling because as it stands, it's basically unplayable in some situations. I think I've done a very, very good job of learning. Um, left it dribbling and even then I still feel like there's so much to learn and I'm at this point where I'm just experimenting and trying to find out the right formula but if you can control the L1 button like this and go for the speed boost like here you can use a combination of ball rolls like that you could find yourself in these in these nice pockets of space and then we're just going to close out the game and I'll show you one last thing in regards to stats at the end of the video nice light tackle there L1 triangle, going to go for the little player lock here, which is something I don't really use. Um, but this FIFA, change a bit of a, see that stutter there? Like that, bit of a stutter. And we go with, should have been a goal. It should have been a goal. Um, I want that to be, um, that wasn't an L2 shot, by the way. I wanted that to be on a stronger foot of Neymar, um, left foot. But anyway, that didn't really work out. Um, 
Uh oh, hang on. Oh my god, did he score? That was a better player. He would have probably have scored that goal. Big mistake. But anyway, that is one thing I wanted to show you in regards to that. Um, but yeah, just bear in mind the left stick dribbling. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Try to go with players with good GL team balance. What I'd recommend shorter players as well. That's one thing I want to say. Don't forget, you want to get better at FIFA, you can click on, I think, over here. Over there, um, I got my Patreon series. We actually got videos from last year over here on these Patreon series. Less dribbling, incomplete detail for old gen, but also some new videos as well. So very, very interesting to watch. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Take it easy, and of course, I'll catch you next time. Peace out.